No one seems to want a Pixel, and I'm not really sure why. If you guys haven't seen uh, my previous one of my previous videos, I said goodbye to my Pixel 7 here, and it has been for sale for probably two to three weeks and no one just seems to really care about the pixel and i'm not sure why you know just because i think this isn't a good phone or it's not a good fit for me doesn't mean this is a bad device okay my, my main complaint about this which according to other reviews uh has been fixed on the pixel 8 series is the display brightness okay and you know kind of the fingerprint sensor Right now I'm filming this video with my Flip 5 and the fingerprint sensor is um, built into the power button on the side. Super, super fast. Much better than this, uh, than the one on the Pixel 7 here, the under display. Can I turn that on and show you guys? Under display there. You know, it's just got that little, it's not super fast. You know, it'll get the job done for sure. So right there it didn't really... You know, it'll definitely get the job done. It's not like it has a problem reading my fingerprint. It's just kind of slow. But I've also heard other reviews on the Pixel 8 say that it still kind of has that issue. But apparently the face unlock is better on the Pixel 8. So now you can use it to authenticate like banking apps, password managers, and things like that. So, uh, but yeah, no one seems to really care about the Pixel. I've had this listed ever since I, I posted that video saying goodbye to this phone. And, um, man, you know what? I probably should have filmed this with my iPhone so I can compare some of the features on my, my Flip 5. I might have to just switch over to that and kind of merge these together. But anyway, so this is a very good phone. I mean, you know, it did come out in 2022, but, and, and it's got the Tensor G2. And according to who you're listening to a review from, some people kind of, like the tensor chips and some people kind of don't i mean i think for what it is it, it's a little i think it's a little less acceptable on the pixel 8 series the tensor g3 because well you know i think it's it's okay on the pixel 8 but you know the pixel 8 pro which is 999 right is its base price not including a sale. I think they go on sale for 750. Is it 750? Or is it 200 dollars off? So 799. Either way. Um, it it just feels like a $999, $1,000 flagship to me, just in my mind, maybe I'm a little bit old school, should have the top tier Snapdragon chip, you know. And it's it's not that the Tensor G3 is bad. From what I've seen and read, people are having really good experiences with the Tensor G3, G3 gosh, tongue twister there, and that's all that really matters. Uh, but here on the Pixel 7, uh, you've got the Tensor G2, and if we think about how most people use their phones just day to day, it's, you know, it's opening apps like the Play Store, you're checking your email, you're snapping some photos. Uh, you're watching YouTube, you're sending messages back and forth, Messenger, WhatsApp, you know, whatever you use, Telegram, you're, you're texting, you're making phone calls, uh, maybe you're paying some bills online, you know, um, you've got a credit card, or maybe you're doing some investing, you know, all of those apps run perfectly fine on the Pixel 7. Even, you know, and I have, I've been using this a little more since you know I figured you know let me let me revisit this a little bit let me use it a little more since I've been dailying my Z Flip 5 I was like you know what since I've got a good feel for the Flip 5 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 let me go back and see how the Tensor G2 does and I've never felt like this was slow at loading the apps that I use day to day, YouTube, checking email, sending messages, going into the settings. Maybe I want to change something. You know, I'm not a mobile gamer. I know there's some people out there who are much more into, you know, like COD Mobile or Fortnite or Genshin Impact. I know that's 
that's a tough one that reviewers like to reference a lot is uh, Genshin Impact. But I'm, I'm not really into those. It's not to say that this Pixel 7 can't play games. And, you know, I haven't done extensive testing. But I all what I can tell you is you'll be just fine. You might not be able to crank the settings on every game. You might not be able to run Genshin Impact at, what is it, is it 60 FPS? I'm not sure. I don't play it. But you'll be just fine. You, you will get by perfectly fine with this phone for many, many years. And I still think it's worth picking up. In mint condition on the used market, I think these go, you know, unlocked, that is, for around $300, you know, $250, $300. And I think it's, it's still a really good option. It's a good, clean operating system. You know, Pixels always have very good pictures. If you're a big picture taker, they take the best, you know, some of the best pictures on the market. Um, and you just kind of get that Google experience. You've got the Google feed here, which I really like. Sometimes I scroll through here and and um, you can scroll through and read some articles. Looks like Tom's Guide put out an article here one day ago. And the title is, I've never gotten the hype around folding phones. The Galaxy Z Fold 6 could make me a believer. It's an interesting little find. Maybe another little video from me too talking about the rumors around the Z Fold 6 and Z Fold 6 Ultra. That's kind of a, you know, that's a bit of a thinker, you know. And the one I'm most excited for, if you haven't guessed it, is the Z Flip 6 because I am most likely going to upgrade with the rumors around that. But that's another video. I'll try to make that if you guys are interested. But yeah, um, you know, IP68 water resistance on this. It will work on all of your carriers. AMOLED display, 90 hertz, 6.3 inch. 1080p is just fine. It's got always on display if you're into that. That's a feature, you know, I never really use is always on display. I just, I don't know. Maybe I should start trying that out. Maybe I can give that a go. Just, it's always kind of seemed like an unnecessary battery drain to me. But, uh, you know, Tensor, the G2, it's an eight core processor. Um, 128 gigs of RAM, or sorry, that'd be a lot of RAM for a phone, wouldn't it? 128 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM in this. You'll be fine for years to come. Um, and there's also, if you need more storage, I think, yeah, there's a 256 gig storage option with the same amount of RAM, 8 gigabytes. UFS 3.1, that's just fine for most people. I think the newest one out is... UFS 4.0, but that's on like the super, super latest phones that are like just launching. Um, so on the back of the Pixel 7, you've got the 50 megapixel. That's the wide angle. I'm not really into cameras, but you know, I have the spec sheet on the side here because it is a lot to remember. The 50 megapixel wide angle um, and the 12 megapixel ultra wide. The ultra wide is an f2.2, and the 50 megapixel primary, the wide, just the wide angle, is an f1.9. Takes really good pictures. Let's see, you know, you've got the stereo speakers; these sound just fine. Out of my devices, the Pixel is my least favorite speakers, but that doesn't mean they're bad. It just, I just prefer the Galaxies and uh, well, my gap, the speaker on my Flip Five. Those seem to just get a lot louder, um, as well as on my iPhone. So, you know, with the Pixels, it seems like you have to really crank up the volume slider here to get anything. And that's, that's not necessarily bad. It's just kind of a Pixel thing, for those of you who know. It's the same way with the brightness. If we take a look at the brightness, if we knock it down to about half, if you see how dim that is, you know, and it's like, man, it should be... It looks brighter on camera, but it's it's pretty damn to me. And then it's like, okay, to get anything decent, decently bright, it's like way up here, you know. So the brightness slider is the same way, but um, very smooth running phone. Let's see here. What else do we have? 
What size is the battery in this puppy? USB Type-C charging. Apparently it's uh, Type-C 3.2. I'm not good with all those different generations of USB-C for like transferring and stuff. You know, we talked about the fingerprint sensor. A 4355 milliamp hour battery. It's got good battery life. Not not the best out there, but you know, that's kind of the the thing with the uh, the Pixel phones is I feel like they're just really good all around in every category. They're not they're not chart toppers or anything like that and benchmarks or charging speed or anything like that, but it just seems to have all of the good all of the features. It might not be, you know, like the charging, the wire charging, 20 watt 20 watt wire charging isn't very fast, but you know, guess what? It gets the job done, and that's what matters. 20 watt wireless charging, actually, I didn't know that, so uh, that's pretty neat. That's decently fast for wireless charging. Rever reverse wireless charging, so you can, you know, enable that, set something on the back. Uh, it doesn't say, you know, how many watts uh, the reverse wireless charging is. Maybe it's like five or 10, I would imagine. So, you know, works on all of the carriers and it just, it will, it will get the job done. And although I don't, it's not that I don't like the software on the Pixel, which, you know, it is kind of boring to me. It's not bad, but you know, it just, it's very cartoony. Um, it's very bubbly. Is, is that a good word? You know what I mean? Like the controls here are just... And, and I get it, you know, most people kind of use their thumbs, so they're, they're large for thumbs, but it's not like I really, and the volume slider here, you know, is nice. That's large for thumbs. Um, it's not like I really have trouble, you know, uh, pressing the toggles on my Flip 5, but let me switch over here and show you guys the brightness difference between my Flip 5 and Pixel 7. Okay, so here we go. Um, got my Flip 5 here. And, you know, so if, if you look at the toggles, it's kind of the, the old style kind of way uh, on the Galaxies, which I prefer because you can have more toggles across the top versus on the Pixel. You know, you've got those big, the big toggles. And, you know, they work just fine. I mean, they have the same functionality. But let's look here. And now keep in mind on my Galaxy, I do have extra bright enabled. So that's just how I run my phone. If it was an option on the Pixel, I would also enable it, but that's not an option on the Pixel phones. I wish Google would kind of would kind of do that. But let's take a look here. If we just crank the Galaxy, I mean, that puppy is absolutely freaking bright. I just love it. Okay, just absolutely stunning. If we crank the pixel here, you know, it, it's bright, but man, it is just not punchy like that Galaxy. I don't know if my iPhone will blow that out of proportion, but man, the Galaxy is just so much brighter. Let's see, can I get a look back here? No, I don't think the, my phone's going to show it very well. Man, I wish there was a better way I could I could demonstrate that. Maybe if we step outside here, oh man, how am I going to, we just gotta figure this out. Let's, um, let me let me set my phone up on something real quick and I'll show you guys. Maybe, maybe it'll show up better if we look at these phones out kind of in the sunlight. Okay, so here we are. Um, hopefully I can get a good shot here. But if we take a look, the Pixel 7, once again, on maximum brightness, give you guys a good look at that. Trying to make sure I have that in the shot. So, you know, if we swap up here, we kind of, there's a good reference point. Maybe it'll, it'll show more like that. Okay. And then if we take the Z Flip 5, show you guys that it's on full brightness. Okay. And then just just look at that. I mean, much more easier to see. I hope my phone is able to pick that up, but just so much more easier to see. I wish I could hold them side by side, but with the way I have my phone set up right now, I can't really 
do side or, or camera. You know, let's just go for it. Let's do Pixel 7. We're kind of just showing the app drawers here. Can you guys, I hope that's in the frame. Man, that Galaxy is just so much more easier to see, you know, versus the Pixel. All right, guys, so I'm back. I want to apologize. I'm not really sure what happened in that clip. So you you were able to see, I watched the clip back, you were able to see the brightness difference, but um, something was happening with the displays, kind of the, uh, the lines going up the displays. I don't know if that's uh, like the display pulsing, you know, PWM. I'm not sure what was going on there, but I do apologize that the lines were kind of going up the screen, but you could definitely see the difference in the brightness. I wish I could do a, a sound comparison, but honestly, it would probably not sound much different since I'm recording on my iPhone and not like a high quality microphone. But yeah, you know, no one seems to be interested in purchasing this Pixel 7. I don't know if it's because of my area and people are not very uh knowledgeable on the pixels they don't really you know it just seems like the iphones and the galaxies are super super popular and you know i can understand why but these are good devices so i but what i suspect is that just in my area no one's really familiar with the google pixels and so it usually takes a little while for these to sell i had a pixel 7 pro brand new in the box a while back that also took a while to sell. You know, I think it maybe it might have took like a month for that to sell. So that that's my guess. Let me know what you guys think. And I appreciate you watching. See you in the next video.